All right, guys, this is TRS Matt, and this is Morimoto Mini D2S installation. Looking at a stock reflector removed from a Toyota FJ Cruiser headlight, completely bone stock. Um, this is an H4 based reflector. The installation procedure that we're going to show you can be used more or less on any reflector. Um, you may just have to widen up the hole that's already pre existing in the back. But that is the beauty of the Morimoto Mini D2S by Xenon Projectors, as well as several others like the Matchbox and the Mini H1. They have a threaded mounting shaft on the back and it makes the installation very convenient because you can utilize the original hole that's in the back of that headlight reflector, put the threaded shaft through it along with some hardware and lock the thing on there. So we're gonna go through the motions of getting this projector installed on this one and we'll kick it off by removing any of the stock hardware that retains the original halogen light bulb on the back here. We're also going to be removing the cap that uh, is the glare guard for the stock halogen bulb too. In this case, it's all done by one single screw on the back as you can see. And if we just take that off, all of those goods will fall off along with it. Boom. Bit. Clip gone, cap out. So that was that. Very, very easy. Sometimes those caps um, are just basically pressed into shape, into place, or just need to have a little, some little clips bent off, and a pair of needle nose pliers can help you remove those with fair ease. So once we have that stuff removed, we generally recommend smoothing down the rest of this detail on the back of the housing, the back of the reflector. Reason being that it's, it's not necessarily going to be in the way, but it's gonna make tightening down the lock ring, which we'll do a few steps later, a little bit easier. So the best way that we have found to do that is actually with the help of a belt sander. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this thing on here. Make a little bit of noise. As you can see, that makes a ton of noise, but basically what I'm gonna do is smooth this thing out. So I'll, I'll go ahead and grind that down and then we'll show you how it looks when it's all complete. But with a little bit of patience, you really shouldn't have any issues doing it. Just pay attention. Don't grind off too, too much. Just the detail on the back. All right, so now that I have the reflector sanded down, you're just gonna give it a visual check to make sure that the angle at which you sanded it is perfectly straight. So if you look at it from the side or if you look at it from the top, you shouldn't see that it's at any kind of curvature or any distinct angle, anything but flat. Um, and, and that way you can make sure that when the projector is mounted, it's going to be pointed perfectly straight and not up in the air, or down at the ground, left or right, etc. So the next thing that you need to do is you need to create an access hole in the reflector so that you can pass the wiring for the bi-xenon solenoid through there. So very simply, I'm just using a Dremel tool with a drill bit on this, and we will just create one small hole. In this case, I'm gonna put the hole slightly off center to the left side because that is where the outlet on the projector for the bi-xenon solenoid wiring is. So I will go with that. doesn't need to be a big hole as you can see it's pretty small you can fit one wire through at a time again this is really dirty uh, there's plenty of dust and stuff all over this it's always helpful to have some compressed air at your side um, or a microfiber cloth so that you can wipe this clean of course before you put it in since this is just a demo I'm not going to go ahead and do that but you get the point you don't want a bunch of crap in your headlight so I will put the wiring for the bi-xenon solenoid through here. All right, so the bi-xenon wiring is through the reflector, through the little access hole I just made. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and plug that in, make sure it's nice and tight.
clip. I have the silicone washer already on the back of the projector. You will need that to dampen vibration. Put that through from the front side. Okay. And from there, you're ready to put on your washer. This washer um, goes on there like that. There's a little slot that lines up with the notch on the front, on the top of the projector. Gives you a little bit of extra surface area to clamp down on. Um, and in the case of an H4 application like this one, it does the alignment job for us. We don't have to worry about that. Um, speaking of, as far as alignment goes, you really need to concern yourself mostly over the rotational alignment of the projector when doing a retrofit, especially with a threaded shaft, because once you clamp this in there and put the headlight back on your vehicle, you're going to need to make sure that the beam pattern is level from side to side. You'll still be able to adjust the height and the side to side um, aim of the housing with the stock adjusters, but you cannot adjust the rotation of the projector. So therefore, what we usually recommend doing is not tightening this lock ring all the way. So you just get it hand tight, mount the reflector back into the bucket of the, of the headlight, mount the bucket back onto your vehicle, get all your wiring hooked up, get your bulbs in there, light it up, and when the vehicle is parked in front of a wall, from the front side without the lens on, you can actually physically adjust the rotation of your beam pattern until it's perfectly straight. And once you're confident that's good to go, you can take it back apart, get this tightened down permanently, and then put a little bit of epoxy on it to make sure that it never wiggles its way loose, and you'll be good to go. You will have a nice, perfect, straight beam pattern. So again, lock ring is on there, projector is hand tight. We're good to go as far as that's concerned on the back. From there, we want to focus on installing our shroud. I suppose that it is worth mentioning that again, this stuff is all dirty. Before you put your shroud on, it's a good practice too to make sure that there's no dust or fingerprints or anything like that on the projector lens, especially on the back side of that lens. I can't tell you how many times or how frustrating it is you do a retrofit, you light it all up, you bolt your car back together, and you got some fingerprints or some kind of crap on the inside of the lens. So before you put your shroud on and button up the headlight, make sure that there's nothing on the inside of this lens because it's gonna drive you nuts. So we will mix up our JB Weld here on this spare piece of cardboard, and you will notice that the shrouds for most designs have these little clips on the inside and those clips in the case that you're using a mini d2s a morimoto projector will align with these notches on the lens holder of the projector which is pretty convenient um, and even though i can just clip this thing on there directly again for the purposes of reliability and making sure that it never vibrates itself loose a little bit of jb weld doesn't hurt it's not going to cause any problems and it's only gonna help to keep that shroud on there permanently. I would recommend using JB Weld, regardless if you are going directly onto the front face of the projector with the shroud, or you're using a projector that mounts with a centric ring, such as a Mini H1, to reduce the lens diameter down to a 2.5 inch. You only need to put a little bit of JB Weld on each clip. Don't overdo it, especially because if you do, you're going to end up getting the stuff all over the shroud, and you're not going to be happy if that's the case because it's going to be nearly impossible to get it off. Okay, be extremely careful when you're putting this on to the projector. Again, take a look at where the clips are versus where the holes are on the front of the projector so that you can get that alignment right from the get-go. And again, be very careful because you don't want to get that JB Weld on anything on the projector, especially the lens. 
It's going to cause you a headache if you need to get it off later. So I've got the shroud fitted on there. That looks good. If this was a permanent retrofit, again, all of this stuff would be perfectly clean. You'll want to give the JB Weld um, a set amount of time to cure before you put everything back together and start using it. I'd recommend just following the directions. I'm not exactly sure what it is. That they suggest, 10 to 15 minutes, it's really not all that long. Great product. Um, but really from there, everything is ready to go back together. So let that JB Weld cure. Make sure there's no, not going to be any outgassing. You can go ahead and reassemble the headlight, put the reflector back into the bucket, the bucket back on the car, get the bulbs in, get the housing caps back on, and you are good to go. We do have some other pretty helpful videos on our YouTube channel that talks about opening and resealing headlights. Um, the Morimoto Retro Rubber is a great product uh, to help give you a little bit of cheap insurance, make sure there's no moisture that's going to get in the lights once they are all put back together. Uh, we certainly recommend it as well as most of the professionals out there. So there you have it. Morimoto Mini D2S Retrofit. Very easy to do. And uh, the results will certainly speak for themselves once you're all finished. <laughs>